Hey guys, in this video we're going to be discussing the Flash 808, the fire next time. This will be my review of it. If you enjoyed the video, like down below, this guy if you're new. And let's get right into Z-Review. Um, so it opened up in a the Central City Bar. Or I don't know if it's called Central City Bar, but it's a bar in Central City. And a heat meta. Um, there was a guy in the bar and a heat meta like, was like sending the place like... Like, really, like, a hot temperature to the point where the guy touched the bottom of the stool and it burned his hand. And, like, smoke was going off in the room. And then it went to a first-person angle from the killer's perspective and it killed one of the guys, pretty much leading them to a crisp. Um, then it goes to Barry and Chester um, going to the crime scene. Um, before that, though, we had Barry and Iris in the loft. And, um, it was, a. Uh, we didn't really know why at the point in the episode, we found out later, but it was a day that Barry is going to have a hard time dealing with. We'll talk about that later in the, uh, review. But Barry and Chester go to the crime scene, with Chester being a CSI consultant, working with Bear, um, like Cisco did, did all that time, um, when he was on Team Flash. Bear... Because they're saying that a fireman did it. So Barry shows a picture of Jacko Barch. Or Birch, whatever. The new, the hotness meta. Now, if you don't remember the hotness, he was a meta in um, season four. And I'm pretty sure the guy's different. <laughs> I don't think his name was Jacko Birch in season four. I could be wrong. I, I don't entirely remember it, but I do know that it it's it looks like a different person playing the character. So I think what they're gonna play off is saying, oh, Earth Prime, you know, the timeline change, we got a new hotness meta. I'm assuming that's the case. I I really don't remember what the guy looked like in season four. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't him. I could if you're more on let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. Um, which I didn't have a problem with it at all. Kamala and Iris were working at, um, Central City Citizen, working on stories and that. Iris tells Camilla that everyone's going to agree and disagree on stories to do because there's a big argument going on, apparently, where, one, the workers there, Taylor, didn't like the stories that Camilla or Iris were producing because Camilla has, you know, BFF with Iris, so, you know. <laughs> um, Jocko, the hotness meta, is a arena security guard and the cops show up to stop him for something that he killed someone in the bar because the bartender was accusing him of that. Um, his son got grabbed by the cops. He got angry and he, his arms started like flaming up and, um, he nearly attacked the cops and then bear shows up, shoves them into the water, super speed and the cops arrest them. You know, he saved the day, whatever, like normal. <laughs> um, he says he's innocent, and it shows a flashback to Henry. This this was the really emotional episode, <laughs> um, for me at least, because it got really personal. But he said he was innocent and all that. Barry takes the case to the seal, and she wants Jocko to get a plea bargain because it doesn't look good for Jocko at all. Everything, all the evidence points towards Jocko being guilty. Um... And Bear doesn't agree at all with what Cecile is saying. Jacko had an argument with the dead victim, the guy who died in the bar, so places him there. Barry has a feeling the case is wrong, and he talked about the face he made that Jacko made when he was being taken away from his son. He knew that face very well because of Henry when he got taken away. You know, that whole scene thing uh, from the pilot and several episodes since. Cecile won't use her powers while interviewing the suspect because it'll cross a line that she said she wouldn't cross. I don't know. Now, I'm not going to just judge this one scene on the entire episode and say, oh, this one scene was bad, or at least what Cecile's lines were bad. Let's say the entire episode was bad, like certain people will, who are complaining they're idiots and think the show's bad because of one bad scene. But just to say it. Cecile, I get that she's more looking towards the law now 
instead of just using her powers to like read people's minds that don't want to be read or using that for interrogations that would make no sense that would like you know like if Cecile did read Jacko's mind like you could argue yes they did that for writing purposes but you could also have like argued that the way that they do things now is by the book having a mind reading meta say oh this person's innocent let's not do this I mean even though we've seen her do that on trial we've never seen her do that in interrogations I know I'm thinking maybe, maybe once over the past couple of years we've seen her do that once and I I wasn't it with um Allegra I think it was with Allegra um where she um So, I just paused recording for a minute. Anytime I said Camilla in the past five minutes, or however long this video is right now, I'm in Allegra. <laughs> I kept getting... I don't know why I thought Camilla. I know Camilla is Cisco's girlfriend. I kept mixing it up. And, yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> um, so, anytime I say Camilla, if I say it any more in the review, I mean Allegra. I'm going to try to remind myself on that. And I lost my train of thought because I just realized that... Um, so let's get right back into the review. Uh, Allegra ran into someone she knew from prison and wants to share her story. Then we go to Cecile interrogating Jacko. And Jacko's son's mom... Uh, Jacko's son's name is Harold, by the way. His mom isn't in the picture, so it's just him. He's the only parent that he has left. Um, Stan, the person who died in the bar, got into an argument over a payment with Jacko... And he went home after the argument, and he was unharmed, according to Jacko. There's no proof towards him being not guilty of the crime, meaning there's no proof showing that he's innocent. Cecile doesn't buy he's innocent, but Jacko believes that he is. That's what Cecile said to Barry when they were in his lab. But Barry still wants to help him, even though everyone is telling him to turn the other way, he's not. Um, Jacko escaped prison to go talk to... The bartender, which doesn't look good for Jocko in the first place. Escaping prison, after you say you're innocent, like, escaping prison makes you look like you're guilty. Um, and let alone going to the person who said you did it. Um, Jocko's powers activate when he gets really mad, from what I could tell, at least. So, you know. And Barry's at Star Lab, looking using the satellites to find Jocko. Barry still believes he's innocent. Even though he broke out of prison and all this, he still believes he's innocent. Um... And Barry goes to the scene where Jacko was, and the bartender was burned to a crisp and is obviously dead. I mean, and Frost Powers can't get rid of the fire, which was something that was like, okay, this is something completely new, and we have no idea what it is. Obviously, this is like, you know, it was weird to see because I was like, it's a fire. Like, you would think Frost Powers would be able to put that out, but uh, we found out why... They couldn't uh, in a couple of minutes, so I'll talk about it. Um, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so many notes. Um, Allegra works on her own story, going behind Taylor's back, um, which Iris told her not to. So went behind Iris's back, actually, more than Taylor, but you get what I mean. Bear got reports from the scene that. Um, doesn't tie Jocko to the scenes. Everyone still believes Jocko has motive and did it, but Barry is really trying to find someone who can vouch that Jocko is innocent. I think it was Frost, Chester, and Cecile that were there um, talking to Barry, and they all believe that Jocko is the person who did it. And not really not believing Barry, but not trusting his gut. Even though they know he's going off gut, they don't trust his gut. Um, the team forgot about Barry's dad, the whole situation there. Um, and Barry says he's going to figure out the truth one way or another. This is another scene that kind of pissed me off. Frost and Chester, I can kind of understand because Chester's new, and I don't, I, I don't think we know the entire situation with how Frost, like, her mind works. Like, does she get memories of Barry? Obviously, Chester knew about Barry's dad, so did Frost, but they're new to the team. They haven't been here for the past however many years. Even though Cecile, yes, she's been on the team for the past however many, like, couple years now. 
She's been a part of the Barry's life and Joe's life for the past, like, decade now. So you can't really argue that Cecile just randomly forgot. I'm not saying, oh, let's not, you know, remember what today is. But let's remember the fact that Barry's dad went to prison for a crime he didn't commit. Why wouldn't Barry be looking into this? I mean, he says he's innocent. He's obviously emotionally connected to it. Why would you not connect that to Barry's dad? Like, there's no reason not to. And Cecilia, you would think, would be the one person next to Joe and Iris who would know, like that, that this is related to Henry. This, There's no other way that Barry could be this emotionally connected to it if it wasn't for Henry. Like, it, it, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it was... A, I don't know what it was, but they need to work on Cecile. The writers, they need to work on Cecile because it was bad, and it pissed, that part pissed me off. Um, where Cecile just randomly forgot about Barry's dad until Barry mentioned it. Like, Joe knew, like, right away. Iris knew right away, even though it was by looking at a calendar, I guess, because everything's been going on. But, you know, even then, it's like, Iris recognized the date right away. And, like, you know, so it made sense. Joe knew it right away. You would think Cecile would know it right away, too, but whatever. Um... Joe goes to see Barry looking at the murder board, which had Henry on it um, throughout, like, season one. And now it has Jocko on it, trying to find out if Jocko's innocent or not. And we found out the day was February 1st in the episode. And the reason why it was so hard for Barry was because it was Henry's birthday. Which is why we got two or three Henry Allen flashbacks in the episode. Um, because it was Henry's birthday. Which we've never had before. Um, on the show, so I'm glad it took eight years for that to finally happen. <laughs> um, Joe says when Henry was turning 45, the whole block showed up, and Bear made, I think it was pancakes or something, for the party, and Henry had to miss it because he was saving lives, and Henry hated himself for it, um, and Joe was, you know, talking to Henry about not hating himself for it, but... That was his last birthday that Barry got to spend with Henry before his mom was murdered and Henry was taken to prison. Um, which is something that Barry always remembers, obviously. Why wouldn't you? But, you know. Barry thinks about the time that he and Henry lost related to the time that Jocko and Harold are going to lose now and what they've already lost if Barry doesn't help Jocko. Joe tells Bear what he went through with Henry and Nora while it was horrible it gives him the opportunity to believe in the innocent. I bet a lot of you thought I was going to say the impossible right there, but I didn't. See, there's a twist every time I talk. Welcome to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not how we do things. Uh, and basically giving Barry the motive to keep looking. Then we go back to Allegra um, giving her story to Iris, but Iris wanted Camilla to work with Taylor. She didn't. I already said this, but, you know... <laughs> Um, and Allegra was following instinct. A lot of gut feelings in this episode. Um, and the majority of the season has been about that, which I don't mind it. Um, but the Allegra stuff would be better. <laughs> Chester found proof that Jacko was innocent. The attacks were from nuclear fusion, a.k.a. coldness. It wasn't from fire. So somehow, some way, which, is, which explains why Frost can bought that fire. It was, like... Well, it was fire. If you look at a nuclear explosion, it is erupting in flames. But the nuclear flu nuclear fusion is combined with cold fusion, which makes it pretty much immune to... Well, not immune, but to, when Frost was trying to put it out, it didn't go out because it was nuclear fusion. You can't just put that crap out with ice or whatever. It's going to take a lot more than that, um, which is why, again, it didn't work. Um, so they're looking for Jocko, and Jocko, um, Harold, Jocko's son, Harold, was being transferred to child services, because he's a minor, he wasn't, like, a, an adult, so he had to be put in the program, and Jocko shows up in front of the car demanding his son. The officer pulls out the medical, which we saw earlier, they've been using it for several years now, to put him down. And Bear goes to stop him before he does something he regrets. Jocko wanted a clean start, but didn't get that, obviously. Look where he's at. Bear uses the wind funnel, or the tornado arms, whatever you want to call it, to put out um, Jocko's firearms, or whatever you want to call them. 
and Bear told Jackal that he found evidence that he's innocent and to stand down. To be clear, this is the first time we've gotten the Tornado Arms back for like the past several years. I can tell you for a fact we haven't had it since season 5, 6, we're definitely... No, we got it season 7, but that was the first time in like forever, and it wasn't really a good scene to use the Tornado Arms in uh, 7, 17 or whatever it was. Um, this scene actually made sense to use it, instead of against like two Godspeeds, which Barry could have just threw lightning at her, punched in the face, you know? Or no, that was Iris. Iris is turning it on, but still, still relevant. But it's the first time we ever saw Barry do it in, like, years. So, you know, it fits. Um, so, the world is erupt- Or not the world, the city is erupting in magma because there's a volcanic amount of magma erupting beneath the entire city. For whatever reason, that's never been said before in the show. You would think that would be a big thing to talk about. Like, hey, there's... You know, if we get a fire meta that's really dangerous, you know, we could more than likely get an erupting volcano over Central City. Might be something to talk about. Like when Barry became the Flash and was dealing with all this eight years ago. Not now, but I'm glad Barry knew about it. He knew what was going on under the city right away. It wasn't like he was flying blind. Like he sometimes is in past seasons. This is a different season. It feels like a whole new show if you really think about it. I mean, my some parts, like just to see on that. But it really does feel like a new show. Anyways, Barry wanted Jacko to absorb all the heat when the ground collapses beneath them um, to stop the magma from destroying the city. So Barry phases below the surface, under the ground. Destroys like a pothole in the well, not it wasn't a pothole, it was just a random spot in the ground, but it became a massive pothole and it made a geyser so Jagger could absorb the steam from the magma, which ended up stopping it. And then Bear faced into the water table under the city, and he was basically fine after that. Um, protect himself from the fire, otherwise, you know, he would have burned. I don't think have we ever established if Barry can walk on lava. I don't think we've ever established that. Because he can walk on water, right? You would think with how fast he is, he would be able to outrun like the like him burning up. Right? That has to be a thing. Like that's like saying like if you get caught in a nuke, right? And like, you know, Barry's in it. And he's running at super speed, he wouldn't get the radiation because he's going so fast. Right? Am I the only one who thinks that? <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, Barry remembers getting his dad out of prison because Jacko, you know, stands down. And Barry helped him, obviously. So, Barry, Jacko, and Cecile talk, and Harold um, will be back with Jacko with full custody. Barry is happy they're back, but isn't always saying, okay, I was still dealing with Henry's birthday. It's hard on him, like always. So, Taylor threatens Allegra for not publishing um, her story. And saying that she's BFS with Iris, so she's going to get whatever she wants. And that's how it worked when she was in prison. And some other stuff. Um, Joseph Seal, Bear, and Iris talk about the funny stories about Henry. Barry, sh- and then we go back to Star Labs with Chester and Frost and Bear. And Barry is now shifting his focus from the, poss- from the possible suspects. Meaning people who did it. To now the, pe- the victims... To find out who did it. And Barry says this is a serial... This is a meta serial killer. And he wants Chester to look for cold fusion. And the satellite to find more victims. Because that's how they're going to find the person who did it. This vic... This meta... This is the big bad, by the way. Whoever this is, this is the big bad. This is it. We're in a new graphic novel. This is not an interlude episode. This is a full-on graphic novel. And we are dealing with... The new big bad. This is it. And he seems pretty scary as hell. I mean, you can't see him. He's just a, like a mist. Well, not actually the mist, but you know what I mean. Like, he... he pff, not the mist matter. He's He looks like a mist. He's just floating around invisible killing people with nuclear fusion. I mean, that's scary as hell. <laughs> um, and like Barry said, he's a meta serial killer. And this is going to push Barry... And Eric Wall said this. This one would push Barry emotionally to the limit. And it would be scary for Team Flash as hell. 
I mean, the first episode, we got that check and check. I mean, that villain was scary as hell. Just in the little bit we got of him, and Barry was emotional as hell. So, you know, <laughs> you have to look at that. Um, but, yeah, that was the episode. Um, I would give it like an 8 or 9 out of 10. The only scenes I would complain about, again, was the seal. I mean, it wasn't the best. Like, they could have been better. It, the Cecile stuff not remembering Barry's dad thing, especially related to this, that kind of pissed me off. Um, but, you know, I mean, all the other scenes were great, even with Iris. Um, Allegra could have been better, but it wasn't horrible. Um, I, I am glad the show is focusing more on making the Flash look good, because that's what it should be doing. But we also need to make sure that when you're putting in our scenes, like with Iris and Allegra, it's a seal. Like, you need to make sure that they are good writing and not just random, you know, BS. I'm not trying to hate on the writers. I'm past that after season seven. I think the writers do know what they're doing now. But I do think Megan Cecile forget about Barry's death, about Henry Allen's death. Or not death, per se, but him being in prison for a crime he didn't commit. I do think it sends a message that Cecile really needs a brain check. <laughs> like, she needs to... Get it together. Like, the writers really need to put that, you know, in her head. Like, you know, something. Like, just make sure that it doesn't... That stuff doesn't happen again. That's what needs to happen with Cecile. I think. And I think the writers need to fix that <laughs> as soon as possible. So, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the episode. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Have a good night. Stay safe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.